Thank you very much. My name is Fahrik Karim. I am a head of a, of a group from Iraq, of, a, of an NGO from Iraq. The first mistake that uh, has uh, brought us into this deadlock today is this notion that extremism and uh, extreme groups, extremist groups, uh, that that manifest extremism in their operations, in their activities, are some kind of an internal phenomenon which originates from Islam as such, that it was conceived within Islam in isolation from the outside world and irrespective of the overall global uh, economic political situation and the developments and the authoritarian regimes that uh, have existed in the Muslim world uh, being uh, patronaged, be, uh, being aided and promoted by the Western powers. That is not to say that the origins of extremism have nothing to do with the Cold War or with the geopolitical polarization worldwide, uh, globally, that we're seeing uh, uh, worldwide today. I would probably say that the start of the spread of extremism dates back to the war, to the Soviet war in Afghanistan in the early 1980s and other military, subsequent military interventions in that country. And the efforts from various uh, governments who have engaged uh, in that kind of uh, operations uh, in Afghanistan. Of course, this also is uh, linked to sources of financing for uh, rebel activity and the various confrontations and conflicts we've been seeing in Iraq and Libya and Syria. It all, uh, in many ways, comes from the conflicts that's uh, in the in the Muslim world ha that have not been resolved uh, until today, uh, such as primarily the Middle East conflict, the uh, Israeli-Palestinian uh, conflict. Of course, uh, also the extremism in the Muslim world is also related to some of the overall global developments, such as globalization, uh, high-tech uh, promotion, the, um, the expansion and the rise uh, of um, the entertainment industry. Uh, all this uh, increases the rift between the rich and the poor and therefore fuels uh, this uh, ideological standoff and this war between um, radical idea ideology and the rest of the world uh, also these new, new technologies uh, have revolutionized the communication and media there are now new tools for advertising your your goods or advertising your entertainment services or advertising your ideology there are also tools for meddling in the domestic affairs of other governments, uh, including media tools. Uh, all of this uh, creates more factors for um, introducing splits or polarization among the various uh, groups of social groups or countries or regions. This affects the behavior of people, their relations uh, with each other, and of course, this is also manifested in the world of politics. As political strike continues, uh, uh, state-of-the-art uh, technical means uh, and hardware and equipment are being used. The war and terror in Syria and Libya and Iraq is a lengthy process that uh, should include a, a lot of stages. And the purpose of that, the, the, the role, the significance of this war against terrorism is increasing. And uh, new means and methods should be, should be uh, employed here, such as introducing uh, modern, efficient uh, methods of governance, combating corruption, mending the, the tension in society trying to form a single unified civil society as an alternative to a uh, uh, sectarian society where you have to have uh, quotas in, in the parliament uh, for various uh, 
Oh, 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 it, it also requires providing quotas in Parliament for, for the representatives of various minorities. Uh, we also need to develop education, departing from this uh, manner of um, uh, of mentoring, of, dogma, of dogmatism in uh, among educators. It also requires a reform of the judiciary and ensuring the independence of judges. It also requires uh, combating corruption and um, cracking down and uh, persecuting those uh, found guilty of corruption. All of this serves the overall goal of engaging religious institutions in the process of reform and transition, particularly by way of supporting forces that oppose uh, terrorism and uh, radical fundamentalism, takfirism. And here, and, uh, and here, as a stronghold against Sunni confessionalism, Sunni uh, sectarianism, we, need, we could use uh, uh, mass media and, and the, the public opinion makers. We could devise programs for educating uh, the uh, community, our citizens, uh, uh, against, you know, for them to be aware against uh, takfir, takfir ideology. We also need to adopt uh, programs uh, of, for modernization in our societies and uh, economic systems. So what we need is a something of a Marshall Plan, something like a Marshall, Marshall Plan for the Muslim world uh, to assist the modernization of uh, and the reforms uh, in our countries, but without uh, interference in our domestic politics and domestic affairs. Number four, we need to develop a, a program for assisting Arab uh, and Muslim refugees in Europe so that they could have uh, a decent uh, uh, life and live in, live in dignity and have a certain quality of life there. We should uh, uh, in develop co contacts between the various um, uh, Arab and Muslim immigrant communities in Europe uh, and uh, their uh, countries of origin back in our region and assisting them in, in various uh, areas of activity. Those were, were my proposals. Thank you.